research and what other teams are doing. What did your research over the course of the winter focus on? And did part of that we were told you wanted to talk to Pete Carroll? Did, did that ever happen? Pete Carroll? Yes. No, I don't really know Coach Carroll very well. We were told uh, that you wanted to Oh, I don't know. I, I admire the way, you know, you look at the way his team's played in college and then also obviously the NFL. Uh, and I made that comment, but I don't really know Coach very well. Um, we've done a lot of research on offense. Obviously, we uh, uh, researched teams that run similar schemes that we run. We had Texas A&M and Clemson come visit us. I think that's pretty well documented. Uh, on defense, obviously with transition of staff, you know, I just we want to be a, a quarters team, and, and uh, Coach Ash has an extensive background, but we haven't stopped there. We keep adding. Uh, you know, Coach Yano was actually here today, a great friend of mine, and, and he's uh, spent some time with me about defense. And uh, so, yeah, we've done a lot. This is a great time of year to really study the game, and uh, I think we've done a good job. So now we got to see improvement on the field. Front row, Dave. Do you guys only work on yourself, or is there any part of spring where you guys work on little facets of yeah. how you're going to play? Well, we open up with Navy, and so uh, I haven't made that decision, and a lot of it's going to be how we progress on defense. But I probably would take a day, maybe two days, to work on Navy in the spring. If not, we're going to have to work a lot in the fall, so I haven't made that decision yet. And I know today was the first day of pads. How much do you guys live scrim this year in the spring? Would you say it's a lot? Like how much do you guys actually do? Well, there's rules, and I want to say full scrimmage. You're only allowed to spring game and two other ones, if I remember right. Um, but even within practice, like how much do you guys like it? Oh, we go against each other. It's called thud tempo, and we'll do a lot of that, and especially with a young team. You know, last year maybe not as much because you had, you know, four returning linemen, and you know, on defense you had a bunch of new guys, so we scrimmage them a little bit more. But it depends on the experience of your team. Well, this this outfit will get more more live situations than last year's. Front row, Bill. Could you address the quarterback situation? Cardell's uh, running with the ones right now. JT had a better day. Didn't start off real well, but uh, finished pretty well. And then obviously Braxton stands right behind him and gets all the mental reps like Kenny Guyton used to last year. So, uh, but Cardell, Cardell, I'm not, I mean, he, you talk about a changed guy. You know, he was a guy that couldn't get out of his own way a couple years ago, and then now he's starting to see the progress in the classroom and acting like, you remember the famous tweet or whatever, it's a different guy. Which had to be a different guy. He won't be here. And about the running backs, is it fair to say that he feels is at least at the top of the pecking order right now? Not yet. Not yet. I think uh, maybe from last year he earned it from last year. But uh, Rod Smith's going really hard. Briante had a good day today. So it's no. It's not. He's not the one yet. Hasn't earned it yet. Tim, yeah, I mean Chuck Wago. You talked about Navy, but everybody's talking about your past defense and you open with Navy, which would be the opposite kind of test, right? Right. No, what I want to ask you about is uh, today y'all were in pads and hitting. Right. What did you see out of them coming out of the break, coming out of the spring break? Uh, what, what, what was your message to them, I guess, about this sort of sprint to, to October 20? Well, I, I think, you know, I just go back and, and I, you know, the day we walked off the field of the Orange Bowl to now, you know, I just, I'm the kind of person that, you know, we don't blame and complain and defend. And, you know, we call it BCD. There's not a whole lot of BCD around here. We've got to find out what the issue is and fix it. And obviously, there's some issues. And the common, you know, if you're blame and complain, you're going to blame players and blame coaches. You know, we don't do that. We try to find out the issue and fix the issue. Uh, obviously, if you've got insubordination or bad people, you got to eliminate things. But we don't have that here. And so, uh, my, my, and this is kind of deep stuff. I talk, actually talked about it at the coaches uh, thing, uh, the State Coaches Association. It's the I got to make sure that we're we're clarity of purpose of culture here at Ohio State, and and it's not scared of making a mistake. It's not the timid. It's it's a very aggressive approach to everything we do. We go block punts. You know what? We're going to run into a punter once in a while. Uh, we try to score a lot of points. You know, we, we on defense, we don't play defense the way I want it played. I want I want an aggressive defense and not worried about things and every once in a while you might give up a big play. You know, that's that's much more appealing to me than that just when you watch them just giving up yards, giving up yards, giving up yards. I want to create issues, create issues for the offense. So I want to make sure the culture is clear. And to say that uh, and I, I put that on myself. I want to make sure there's clarity of purpose at Ohio State. So we spend a lot of time on that. Today, do you, are you seeing? Are you seeing that kind of come around? Yeah, I mean, what, that's so early, Tim. I don't, you know, yeah, know. you know, we're Von Bell. Von Bell going down really hurt us. Yeah. He'll be back. I mean, it's not ACL. It's MCL. And uh, you know, we just 
It's just got to get all your moving parts. There's going to be certainly some freshmen coming in to get in the mix right away. You know, Eric Smith and some of those kids just because we don't have the numbers back there yet. Second row, David. The guy that stepped up, excuse me, one second. The guy that is playing four to six, which four to six seconds, is a kid named Darren Lee. I have no idea what he's doing, and he has no idea probably what he's. But I don't care. That's the thing. That's a, I want to make sure that culture's out there. We don't. You're not being graded on if the kid knows what he's doing right now. What you are being graded on as a unit leader and as a coach is will the kid play as hard as he possibly can. There's never been a team there in 27 years of coaching that I've seen the team that didn't play the hardest didn't win that game. And lack of execution and lack of technique is over. You can overcome that with incredible effort. You can't overcome lack of effort with great technique. It doesn't. That doesn't happen. At some point, you'll fail. So that's once again. I'm just giving you the. I want to make sure that's out there. And it's. I mean, these kids have heard that nonstop. And same with their coaching staff. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I know it's early, but what's your Well, Taylor Decker is really, he's a product of culture. You know, there's a, a line coach here at Ohio State that developed a culture in an offensive line room that every day that, you know, to say Taylor Decker, and this is not to be the toughest guy in the world when he came here, no. But you sit in that meeting room with this line coach and with those four guys that just left, you know, same with Reed Fraggle. Reed Fraggle was a third string tight end that didn't play at all. Now all of a sudden he's playing pro football. How'd that happen? You know, it's because there was a culture developed in an offensive line room. And so Taylor Decker, so far, has been, you know, he's really grown into a very good player. Front row left, uh, Doug. You mentioned Vaughn Bell. Um, how, are you, how are you guys making up for his Cambrose? Cambrose is back there. Down. Yep. And uh, Tybus. Okay. And Darren Lee is the walkout. Nickel. Okay. Like, do you guys use that, that walkout term? Is that, is that it's a linebacker. Well, we got, we got these two bodies. We got Worley. We got... Uh, a kid named Feta, and you got uh, Darren Lee. Darren Lee's running over the ones, and it's kind of a, you know, we want to have a stronger, more, you know, guy out there. The whole point for the bubble screens and all that stuff that hurt us last year, and um, but we'll also have a nickel, and that's where Eric Smith and Von Bell and those guys when we come in, we we'll have some good depth. Malik Hooker, so we'll have a little bit of depth at safety. And then you you had mentioned how you are limited in like full scrimmages you can do and that kind of thing. Is is it ever possible in your mind that Spring game as we know it would ever go away. Maybe could think I hate that. No, I'm not. I'm going to do it every year because I just think it's priceless for a player to get a rep in front of 50, 60, 70 thousand. If I was a school where you get 400 people, yeah, you might. Because what are you really getting? I just think you find out about a Dontre Wilson, you find out about Raquan McMillan, uh, Johnny Dixon, some of these kids that come on how they perform when the lights go on, and in a place like Ohio State where you get a good crowd. I mean, even if I got to go some, a couple of times we've had like one line go both ways and all that. But I, I we'll always, as long as we can, we'll always have a spring game. Back row, Mark. Two years in a row now you've had spring break interrupt spring practice. Is there an advantage to that? Is that something you might look to change? The biggest reason we do it is I used to go four days a week. And uh, you, if you go the two, NCA gives you when you practice 20 hours per week. So the two, hour, two days we went in shorts. We still got the full 20 hours to meet with our players, so that's why I extended it one week, and I, we'll always do that now. And then also the, you know, to have back to back. You know, you talk about health of players and safety of players, and I don't believe in. You know, we, just, we just changed our routine since some studies have been done, and I've just been researching it, and we won't practice back to back in the spring. Last two questions, Bill. Go ahead. Yeah, is there a guy, maybe a freshman, maybe not, who's kind of come out of nowhere? And Darren Lee is one of them. Um, that's a good question. Darren Lee is one for sure. Uh, Ray Kwan's doing pretty good. Those are two just off the top of my head. He's a mature, very mature player. You know, he's a guy that's got some awareness to him. And are there any injuries, anything? Just Vaughn Bell. Do we have anybody else? Yeah, that's all we got so far. Tim, last question. Oh, Eli Apple, the other day, he didn't seem to be doing much when we got to watch and stuff. Is he okay? Yeah, he had a little bit of an infection. No, I don't want to. Yeah, I think infection is probably the right word. Yeah. Uh, medical situation. He practiced today. Oh, yeah. So they just had to pull him out for medical reasons. Uh, what I want to when you when you guys had Texas A&M and staff and Clemson offensive staff and stuff, what 
what's, what's the main thing you get out of something like that? I mean, what you do is you study what they do well, and they study what we do well, and you try to clinic each other a little bit. For example, I thought Clemson did a good job with their jet series, and that means that sending Sammy Watkins in, in motion and the, the threat of a jet sweep, especially with a kid like that, is, uh, and we, you know, we got some guys who can run. So we're just trying to, how they timed it up, how they utilize the jet motion and the play action off it, those kind of things.